Hey everybody, welcome to Cheeseology with Adam. Today we're going to be making a triple crown, the fourth and final cheese in the Bloomy Ryan series. <coughs> we're going to be adding heavy whipping cream to our milk to make this cheese. It's a wonderful cheese, only takes about three weeks to age at the absolute most. Let's get started. For this recipe, we will need a gallon of milk, geotrichum candidum, penicillium candidum, we will need buttermilk culture, Animal rennet is what I use for my coagulation, and then of course heavy whipping cream for that added butter fat. All ingredients and also some of the equipment can be purchased via the links in the description of the video. In addition to the ingredients that I just showed you, some equipment that we're going to need. We're going to need our stock pot as usual, a heat source, I'm using an electric uh, hot pad in my garage. Um, you can do everything I'm doing here, you can do right in your kitchen. We're going to need a small set of measuring spoons. Uh, specifically, we're going to need 1 64th of a teaspoon and 1 16th of a teaspoon uh, for, our, for our mold powders. Uh, in addition, we're going to need our thermometer, good thermometer. And then as far as forms, I'm going to be using two four and a quarter inch uh, camembert forms. Um, I want a little bit of a higher cheese for this. I'm using one gallon of raw cow's milk. You can use pasteurized milk if you're using pasteurized. You want to add about a half teaspoon of calcium chloride mixed with some about a quarter cup of non-chlorinated water um, in before your rennet um, when you're just dumping the milk in. But I'm using raw milk, so I won't need to do that. Um, I do, like I said, I do want a taller cheese, so I'm going to see where the curd comes to on these forms. If I'm only halfway up or so between the two of them, I'm just going to put it all in the one. With the raw cow's milk, I'll get a great curd formation, so I think I'll probably be about three quarters of the way full on these two forms. It really will settle to about half that, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to need some plastic draining mats. Um, all of this stuff that I'm showing you can be purchased via the link in the description of the video, including these bamboo draining mats. We're going to need these as well. And then for this, if you have a recessed sink, in your kitchen, you can just drain these on that so it just goes right into your um, sink. But I'm doing this in my garage where I do all of my cheeses, and I use this draining pan. It's basically one inch high, has a grate on top, and I just let the whey drip into this. And then every so often when I do my flips, which you'll see here a little bit later, I just dump that and then just keep it right here on my table. Um, so that's the equipment we'll need, and the ingredients I already showed you. So we'll get our milk in and we'll start heating our milk and heavy whipping cream to 88 degrees. Like I said, we're using one gallon of milk for this, minus 10 ounces, and we're replacing that's 10 ounces with 10 ounces of heavy whipping cream. So overall, still one gallon of fluid, but 10 of those ounces is gonna be the heavy whipping cream. So I'll dump my milk and heavy whipping cream in and we'll get the heat on and we'll start heating it up. And I'll show you what that looks like right here. Okay, I've measured out 10 ounces of my heavy whipping cream. I'm just going to add that into our pot. And now I'm going to add the gallon of milk minus 10 ounces of milk. So we still have one gallon of fluid overall. Okay, now I'll add my milk. Remember all the equipment, anything that touches the cheese, you're going to want to sanitize. I use a food grade sanitizer called Star Sand. I just have it in a spray bottle. All of my equipment's clean from any kind of curd from previous cheeses unnaturally, but then I just spray it down a little bit, kind of a mist on everything, just so I don't introduce any other bacteria that we don't want there. All your equipment and tools are cleaned and sanitized. Okay, now that we have our milk and heavy whipping cream poured into our pot, I put my thermometer in, just clipped it on the side there, turned on my heat, and we're gonna bring this up to 88 degrees. Once we get to 88 degrees, we're gonna remove this from the heat, and then we're gonna add our packet of C21 buttermilk culture. Um, so we have a few minutes here. If you don't wanna blast the heat, you wanna bring it up kinda of slow. I had let this sit out at room temperature for about an hour or so um, before I poured it in. So right now, I'm about 56 degrees. Um, so we'll bring that up to 88, and then we'll continue to our next step. 
Okay, our milk is now up at 88 degrees. I'm gonna take this off the heat so it doesn't continue to rise. And what we're gonna do now is just, we're gonna add our C21 buttermilk culture. This will start the acidification process. Um, the culture will feed on the lactose, the milk sugar, and convert it to lactic acid. So we're just gonna take our little packet, of C21 buttermilk culture, open that up. And what we're gonna do, we wanna do is just kinda sprinkle this on the top, kind of as evenly as possible. And we're gonna let it rehydrate. We're gonna let it rehydrate for about two minutes, just so when we stir it, it doesn't clump up on us. So we'll let that set. I can actually take my thermometer out right now. And what we're also gonna wanna do after we stir it is put our lid on, and then we wanna wrap it with something, um, like a towel or something like that, just to try to keep it at that 88 degrees. Um, if it drops a couple degrees, that's fine. But we want to try to keep it as close as possible. Unless your room's really cold, it shouldn't. This should not be very difficult to keep it right around that temperature with the lid on and kind of wrapped with something. So we'll just give that another minute, and then we'll stir that in, and then we'll let it set for 60 minutes to acidify. Okay, now that our milk has reached 88 degrees, um, I've sprinkled the C21 better milk culture onto the top of that. That's rehydrating. Now we're going to want to put 1 16th of a teaspoon of Penicillium candidum, and then 1 64th of a teaspoon of the Geo Trichum uh, candidum as well. So I'll do that right now. We'll start with the Penicillium candidum, 1 16th of a teaspoon. Sprinkle this around the top. Now I'll use 1 64th of a teaspoon of the Geo, Geo Trichum uh, candidum. Okay, then I'm just going to sprinkle this around the top as well. All right, we want to let that rehydrate for just a minute or so. Um, and then we'll stir that up real good, and then we will put our lid on and then wrap it with a towel or something, just to try to maintain that 88 degrees for the next hour, and then we'll continue to our next step. Okay, it's been about two minutes. Now we're just going to slowly stir, stir this in, and make sure that we're being gentle and just kind of stirring back and forth. We don't want to be splashing our milk all around. Just we need to get this mixed in real well. Stir it for about a minute or so, maybe two minutes. Um, but there should not be any clumping of the, of the ingredients that you just put in because we did let them rehydrate first. Okay, we stirred this in real well. Now what we're gonna do is put our lid on. We're gonna wrap it with something and then we're gonna let it sit quietly undisturbed for 60 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll add our remnant. All right, it's been 60 minutes since we put our culture in and our mold powders. Now what we're gonna do is take our lid off and we're gonna uh, add our rennet. I've added a quarter teaspoon of single strength animal rennet to a quarter cup of non-chlorinated water. I'm just gonna pour this in and I'm just gonna mix it up slowly. You're gonna see the top of your, of your milk is a little yellowish and you'll see it separate when you um, start stirring it, that's the butter fat rising to the top. So we're gonna put our rennet in, stir this up for about a minute or so, and then we're gonna put our lid back on and rewrap our pot with a towel or whatever you're using, and we're gonna let this sit and coagulate for 90 minutes. At that point, we will test for a clean break, and if we have that, then we'll cut our curd and proceed to the next step. All right, that's mixed in pretty good. So gonna let this sit undisturbed for 90 minutes, and then we will check to see what we have. All right, it's been 90 minutes. Our curd has been sitting after we mixed in the rennet. Um, we had wrapped our pot with something to try to keep it near that 88 degrees. Now we should have a good curd formation. So what we're gonna do is we're going to check for a clean break. And if we have that, we're gonna proceed with cutting our curd into one inch strips, vertical and horizontal. Um, well, let's first see if we have a clean break. So to test for a clean break, first we're gonna make a slit in our curd, and then we're gonna make a slit across that slit, and we're just gonna raise up a little bit. And that's what we should be seeing. Look at that separation. That's perfect. All right, so now we're just gonna cut it into one inch strips, roughly. I can feel the resistance in the, as I'm cutting this, so I can tell I do have a really good curd formation. Again, that's the 
that's the uh, raw milk that's giving us that really good formed curd. Then you can make great cheeses with pasteurized milk, but for this one I like to use raw milk if I have it available, um, just because we'll be flipping this in open-ended forms. We're gonna let this sit for five minutes and let those cuts that we just made heal, and then we're going to slowly stir it for about 10 minutes. Okay, as you saw, we have that great clean break. I cut the, the curd in strips of one inch wide, ver vertical or horizontal. I'm gonna let this sit for about five minutes. What that's doing is letting those cuts heal a little bit. And we want that because we do want to retain the moisture within the curd. That's why we're cutting them so big. Um, if we were making like a cheddar or a pepper jack or, or something like that that we're going to press, we would not cut these at one inch. It would probably be a half inch wide. Um, so we're just going to let this heal for about five minutes. And then what we'll do is we will stir it slowly for about 10 minutes. What that's doing, it's, it's letting, it's helping firm up the outside of the, the uh, curds a little bit while releasing a little bit of the whey. So it is getting rid of a little bit of that moisture. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like right here. And we're gonna wanna, as I said, slowly stir it all. Look at that wonderful curd, those big blocks. So what we wanna do, we're gonna have strips going down to the bottom. You're gonna wanna cut those off. We wanna ultimately have one inch chunks. But look at that wonderful, wonderful curd formation. Just really beautiful. These slice up really easy. Um, in the one inch strips and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slowly stir this like this and chop these up to one inch pieces for about 10 minutes. This will release a little bit of the, of the whey um, before we start draining in our colander. So we'll stir these up and then we'll continue to the next step. All right, we've stirred now for 10 minutes, bringing that heat back up. I'm going to cut my heat off and I'm going to remove my pot from the heat source. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to just we take our thermometer out now. We're done with that. And what we can do is just let these curds settle under the way for just like a minute. And then I'm going to take a, a cup or a bowl or something and I'm going to pull off the whey as much as I can off the curds just to get rid of some of that liquid. And then what I'll do is I'll take my colander, I'm going to take it right over to my sink and just I'm going to dump the pot slowly into that. So that'll get rid of the bulk of the whey and then I'll finish the draining on this tray as I was mentioning. So we're just going to let this soak for a second and then we'll ladle out some of those, some of the curd and then we can put our curd into our cheesecloth to drain for about 30 minutes. So I'm just going to take the jar that I have, get some of the liquid. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my colander with my cheesecloth and my pot right here to my sink, and I'm going to dump these slowly into here, and then I'm going to bring them back. All right, I drained my whey. I just dumped the, the curds into my colander, my cheesecloth line colander, and I just have this on a draining pan here, just so I don't believe it's sitting in my sink, which is perfectly fine. I just have, happen to have this. Um, so we're going to let this sit for 30 minutes and drain a little bit. Every so often, you could lift up on the cheesecloth. Um, it'll help get rid of some of that liquid. After 30 minutes, we'll come back and we will put it in our forms and then we're pretty much done for a while. All we have to do is flip it about every four to six hours. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. We've been letting our, our curd drain in the colander over our sink or on the draining pan like I did here. And now what I've done is I just moved it over to my table and I set up my forms right here on my draining pan. All we're gonna do is ladle this in into these forms, and then we're gonna let this sit about four to six hours, and then we will do our first flip. So all I'm doing is just scooping in there, just chopping it up a little bit just so it sits evenly. out to about where I said about three quarters of the way full. Uh, we'll flip this in about four hours or so. Um, the final thickness of this will be about, we'll probably reduce by about a third. So we, we, we still will have decent sized thickness on these two wheels. I'm happy with this. This went really well and we're pretty much done. Just have to flip it a couple times over the next 24 hours and then tomorrow morning we will start to salt this. But we'll go over all that once we get there. 
Just make sure you flip these about three times over the next 24 hours, and then we'll pick up at that point with salting. Okay, it's the next morning. Um, over the last 24 hours, we flipped these a few times. And if you've seen any of my other videos, the way we do that is we put another draining mat on top and we just flip it like that. And it'll slide right down into the form. Um, for this cheese, we did this about three or four times. You should see good consolidation on both sides of the, uh, of the cheese. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to salt these. So we want to take about 1.5 to 2% of the weight of each cheese, and that's the amount of salt that we'll use for each one of these. Um, we're going to use half of that salt on the top surface, and then in about four hours, we'll come back and we'll put the rest of that, the remaining part of that uh, salt on the other surface by flipping it. So what we'll do right now is just, we'll remove our forms. You can see these look really nice. Still soft, so be careful. Um, and then I'm going to weigh each one of these and then we'll get our total weight for each one and I'll measure out that salt. I'll do that right now. My first cheese is 14 ounces and my second one is 13 ounces. So I got this pretty darn close to evenly split up when I distributed the curves. So I'll measure that amount out. I'll probably do 1.8% of the salt of the weight in salt. Um, again, it'll be 1.5 to 2%. We'll do about 1.8 times 13 and 14 ounces. And then we all will put half of those amounts on the uh, cheeses. What I'll do is measure out the 1.8% of the cheese weight in salt. And then I will take half of that and put it on top of each cheese. Now, I'm just gonna rub this around very gently. Now what we're gonna do is just wanna, we're gonna slide these forms back on. Now that we have these salted, we're gonna let these sit for about four to six hours. Give plenty of time for that salt to soak in. And then we will flip these and we will salt the other sides. Okay, our cheeses have been sitting for several hours after salting the first, the first side. We're going to remove our forms. I'm just going to flip these over. You can feel they're still very soft. They should be. Okay, these are both now salted as you just saw. What we're going to do is we're going to gently put our forms back on. And we're going to let these sit overnight. Tomorrow we'll start the drying process. We'll take these forms off, we'll let these air dry, surface dry, and then we'll throw them into our aging space. You don't want to let these age very long. Um, you can eat these about a week after they're in the aging space. Um, I like to let it go a little bit more just to get some more of that surface ripening activity going on in the cheese. But, um, but yeah, we'll let these, uh, we'll let the salt absorb on these and then we'll start drying tomorrow. It is now the day after we've salted our cheeses. Now what we want to do is start the drying process. We will let these air dry for about two days until the surface is dry to the touch. And then at that point, we can put our cheeses into our aging space. That is about 52 degrees and about 90% humidity. And we will leave it there for a week to three weeks, depending on your preference. This, does, this cheese does not age along at all and it will be ready to eat within a couple weeks. Hope your cheese turns out well. Happy cheese making.